Hi everyone, and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to create a residual income model to value a stock in Excel. Residual income is the income after considering all of a company's capital. Residual income is also sometimes referred to as economic profit because it estimates the company's profit after subtracting both debt and equity. This is unlike a company's income statement, which only includes a charge for the cost of debt in the form of interest expense. All else equal, a company with higher residual income should be associated with higher valuations, as it's creating value by generating more income than its cost of obtaining capital. In our example, we're valuing a fictitious company and have the following assumptions. The current share price is 95.6. The cost of equity is 12%. It's paid a dividend of 2.5 in 2019. Its book value per share in 2019 was 29.5. The earnings retention ratio is 60%. This is the proportion of net income retained in the business, as retained earnings instead of being distributed to shareholders as dividends. We then have the return on equity figures, and here we've got the expectations for 2022 to 2026, 2027 to 2039, and 2040 onwards. We also have the EPS and dividend forecasts for 2020 and 2021. Finally, for simplicity, we will also assume that after 2039, ROE will be 12%, therefore equal to the cost of equity, and as a result, residual income will be zero, therefore the terminal value would be zero as well. Assuming a residual income of zero in the long run may make sense, because if a company has a high ROE currently, other competitors will be enticed to enter the marketplace, which will lower abnormal returns. To create our model, we start by inputting the book value given, which is 29.5. Since this is the current year, the present value is the same figure. Next, looking at the year 2020. To find the book value, we must first input the projected income and dividend per share figures. The projected income for 2020 corresponds to the EPS forecast, which is 7.9, and the dividend forecast is 3.2. The current book value using the clean surplus relationship is the previous book value plus the EPS minus the dividend per share. The cost of equity is 12% each year. We can add absolute references here to ensure that it remains static. And we can use this to give the actual cost of equity, which is the previous book value multiplied by 12% in each year. The residual income is then the projected income minus the equity charge. We can then calculate the present value by dividing this by one plus the cost of equity to the power of n, which is simply the current year divided by the starting year. Once again, we can add absolute references here to the starting year. Next, looking at 2021, we can once again input the projected income and dividend figures, which we have available in our assumptions. Next, looking at 2022 to 2026. But before this, let's drag the remaining cells down to the bottom as the main variables that will change are the projected income and dividend per share.
Here we assume that the return on equity, in other words, the projected income over the book value, is 25%. To find the projected income, we can therefore multiply the book value by 25% and drag this down. Then from 2027 to 2039, it is 20%, so we can multiply using this figure instead. To calculate the dividend per share, we can use the earnings retention ratio. Since this is the proportion of net income retained, then the proportion being distributed is 1 minus 0.6 multiplied by the projected income. We can then drag this down. We have now created our residual income model. To find the overall present value of residual income, we can simply sum the individual present value figures like this. Now one thing we're forgetting is the current book value, so we need to bring this over here. In other words, the implied share price using the residual income model is 89.44. This is lower than the current price, therefore based on our model, we may forecast that the current price will converge down to the fair price that we have calculated. If we are confident in our forecasts, we may conclude that the stock is currently overvalued based on the residual income model. We can make this dynamic using a formula. When we change the inputs like this, you can see that the present value of residual income and the outcome will update. As shown, the current book value captures a large portion of total value, which contrasts with other valuation approaches, such as the dividend discount model or the discounted cash flow model. The key, however, when using any model is the quality of your forecasts. It's also important to supplement your valuation with additional analysis. So that's how you can create a residual income model in Excel to value a stock. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for future Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.